In this video, we're going to create a single click to reveal carousel. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I do here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your e-learning colleagues. So this video today is a really good first dip in the water, if you will, for people who want to try uh, advanced interactions. They just want to try something very simple that will get them a little bit of a result that's maybe different than the widgets or different than just the basic uh, components that you can put on a slide. So the idea is simple. We're going to have an infographic in the middle of the slide. And when you click on the infographic, it toggles to the next state of that multi-state infographic, showing you the next item and the next item. And if you continue to press it, eventually it will roll around. We'll also put a little bit of force navigation into it by disabling our next button on slide enter and enabling it once you've visited all the different states of the infographic. This is a really easy to build interaction and it's perfect for those who just want to get started with advanced interactions in Adobe Captivate. Let's take a look. All right, so here's what I have on the slide. The very first thing is just a text block, specifically a paragraph block, and I replaced the title with heading six rather than using heading two because I like it better. And we just have some basic instructions here. The very next block is an image block. My intention is to make this a multi-state object where you know you simply click on the object itself to toggle through all the different states, which is easy enough to do. And the next button will be disabled until you've visited all the states of this single button carousel, if you will. So a nice, simple interaction. And the fact that you build it yourself allows you to really design how it looks, making it a little bit more flexible than perhaps what the widgets offer in Adobe Captivate. So let's start off. Everything we need is here. One thing I want to do first, though, is I want to just show my states here and make sure the disabled state is available. I'll turn off selected, and I'll do that for the back button as well. I don't need that. And let's start by building our multi-state image here. It's basically a bunch of infographics. So I'm going to grab the first image and drag it over from my folder here. And this is obviously not the way I want it to look. So I'm going to double click on it, which brings me into the edit image window and I can make some changes here. So instead of filling the space, I want it to actually fit within the space. So we'll always sort of get this tall, narrow image. And for the sake of mobile, let's go with fixed height so that it fills the space that's available there. So I can go ahead and save this. I'm happy with that. It's just some generic image that I'm using for right now but it'll work for this case here. So now I need to add five additional states because of course I have six different states for this multi-state image. So let's add the first one and we will call this asset two and I'll add asset three. Let's move this up a little bit here. Asset four, asset five, and one more. Asset six, perfect. So one by one, I'm going to replace asset two. And all you need to do is select that, and then you can drag in your second image. I'll select asset three, and we'll drag in the third image. Asset four, this works really well, I think, with like mini infographics, but you could use anything you want here. Asset five, and then last but not least, I say that a lot asset six there. All right, so let's get into building our interactions. I'm just going to click outside of this here 
so that nothing is selected on my slide here. And I'll select the interactions icon in my right hand toolbar here. And the first interaction we need is we need to disable this right arrow here. So add an interaction on slide enter. We'll run this this interaction that simply disables our button number eight. OK, and that's all that happens on slide enter. Now we're going to use the image itself as our trigger to go to the different states here. Let's put this back to the default state here and we will add an interaction. So when you click tap the image, now notice what just happened there. As soon as I start to add that interaction, it adds a hover, visited, selected, and disabled state. We actually need to disable these because we don't want those as part of our multi-state object. We only want the custom states that we've created here. So let's go back to our click tap here and we'll click on more and we're going to go to the next state of our multi-state image. Next. Now, as far as resetting state on slide revisit is concerned, you could do this so that it comes back to the first state every single time, or you can leave it unchecked and it will just retain the state that it was left at, probably somewhere later in the interaction. But that's up to you. I'm going to choose reset state on slide revisit here, and we'll click done. Okay, let's test this out so far and see what we've got. There we go. So clicking on the image toggles through all the different states. Now, How do we make sure that our next button is enabled once we've visited all those states? Well, that's actually another slide level interaction that we can introduce here. So we click on the slide interactions and the plus, and we'll say custom states viewed, select asset one, and we can just select all the states. So if I viewed number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, we will then go into more and enable our button number eight. Next and done. So let's test this out and see if it does what we need it to do. Okay, here we go. So we click on that, we click on that, we click on that, we click on that, we click on that. And our next button is enabled. And by the way, with this tall, narrow image, it works really well for mobile as well. So you can see here, it works excellent. And they can, of course, keep clicking on this once they've enabled the next button. And then, of course, they can click it and continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.